Good morning. Today we are going to have a very brief overview and introduction to African cinema. I know that many of us are not familiar with it. In, in fact, uh, an average person does not even know that uh, there is a cinema industry in Africa, but there is a very thriving film industry in Africa and countries that form a part of the African continent. Um, so, African cinema, one of the most well known films is the Italian Algerian movie, The Battle of Algiers. Okay. It was directed by someone called Gillo Pontecarvo. Please note down this name, Gillo Pontecarvo, who also later on made a film, Coimeda. So, two movies by Gillo Pontecarvo, The Battle of Algiers and Coimeda. We will be talking about uh, the growth of African cinema and the key characters there are Yusuf Shahin, Shadi Abdul Salam, Muhammad Lafdar Hamina. We will be also talking about uh, Nigerian cinema, so Nigerian and other parts of Africa. So, these are the key players here, Hubert Ogonde, Ola Balgan, um, Osman Semben, Suleiman Sez. Idrisa or Dragoa. These are the names and then recently there was an Oscar winning film Sotse by Graham Hood, which is again a very eminent, a very prominent African film. So, uh, to begin with we have to know that many African nations did not have a film industry till they became independent of colonial rule. Uh, in the 1960s and 70s, you have to remember that Africa to begin with was a colony just like ours and um, the rapid development in the African film industry happened once they started getting independent of European powers. Since then film uh, from Africa uh, and film industry it has begun to flourish and productions have started attracting international attention. France is a major funder, you know he, the, the French people, French government is a key source of funding to African cinema. Uh, Egyptian cinema is also very prominent and many people when they think or when they hear of the word African cinema, they are uh, immediately associated with Egyptian cinema. Now, most of Arab cinema also has come to be recognized with Egyptian cinema. So, you know Arab cinema, African cinema, Egyptian cinema, there is a lot of overlap and people are generally people by people I know um, by uh, people I mean people who are not into um, you know reading or studying international cinema. So, for many uh, such people they are all the same. So, uh, productions of films in North Africa remained quite low until after the second world war. An important filmmaker of this period was Yusuf Shaheen, um, whose Cairo station which was made in 1958 made a distinct impression worldwide. Shaheen also made a film such as Alexandria Y and Adu Bonaparte. Um, many of his films had a strong political overtone. See, we have to remember that cinema is always situated in the ground realities of its socio-political culture and, uh, 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 and uh, attitude. So, African cinema is no different. Although, um, in our country as we have been seeing, we have been talking a lot about the mainstream cinema we recently did history of Hindi films, we also did um, Hindi uh, film music. So, we can talk about uh, escapist films which are which is depoliticized, okay, but uh, that is not the case in um, many international film circles. Cinema is extremely political and they interrogate and they address um, serious social and political concerns. So, Shaheen's films such as The Sparrow, where which deals with uh, Egypt's six day war against Israel and uh, also Shadi uh, Abdel Salam's The Night of Counting the Years is about the robbing of mummies tombs. So, again we know Egypt and we know it is known for mummies and robbing of 
mummy's tombs and that's the theme of the night of counting the years by shadi abdul salam so these were the films strongly concerned with political and cultural uh, issues of africa one of the most famous film and this is a film that has become like a textbook for all cinephiles is the battle of algiers which is an italian algerian production is uh, directed by gelo pontecavo and it is a compelling political drama it is an unsentimental analysis of the conflict between the colonizers and the revolutionaries during the initial years of the algerian war the film uses non professional actors it was shot on locations and uh, all this played actual um, role uh, you know um, it almost played played out that actual war that took place the director uh, uses grainy shots almost to give it a give it like a some, let's say documentary feel so we have been doing all this like italian new realism french new wave we have also been talking about our own new kind new cinema so uh, the standard tropes are used there it's a, a feature film although it gives the impression of being a documentary to give it a very realistic look is shot in black and white camera work again through editing and uh, through certain stylistic devices of cinematography by centering key events on a handful of individuals pontecavo shapes the film into an exemplary suspenseful drama so although it may be based on real life incidents it also plays out like a, a feature film um his other films include quemada uh, this is about 19th century portuguese and british imperialism in the caribbean the film had malen brando uh, on top of the cast here is a sequence from the battle of algiers Mohammad Lahdar Hamina's Chronicles of the Burning Years is a 1975 film which traces the history of Algeria from 1939 to 1954. Algeria along with Morocco and Tunisia has produced award-winning films such as The Silence of the Palace which is a look at the role of women in the contemporary society. some more important filmmakers from the sub sahara region are osman samben soleman says and idrisa odregoa when south africa was facing apartheid very few films are produced there however we have one very special film very important film which it is directed by graham hood it won an oscar sotsi which is a 2000 film it is about um the violence of black people against their own kind so um here is a scene from sotsi 2005 film cinema from nigeria is also quite uh, interesting the nigerian film industry is now referred to as nollywood and it grew rapidly in the 90s and the 2000s it's currently um, only behind india as the largest film industry in the world ola balogun whose uh, film uh, for freedom was entered into the russian film festival and hubert ogunda were part of the first generation nigerian filmmakers who were operating in the 1960s they could not produce many uh, films because of uh, the high cost of production the use of english rather than nigerian has aided in the boom of nigerian cinema the use of digital technologies has cut costs and made film making more accessible um osafia in london which was released in 2003 was one of the first movie to reach international markets and it also did well at the box office straight to video films are a norm rather than an exception with digital film making becoming more um, relevant and apart apparent of late so similarly while shooting on location in places such as hotel rooms offices uh, it was the 
uh, was the norm the film in the industry now enjoys a healthy balance between studio productions and on location shoots. So, once upon a time the, the films would go straight to video, now they have the budget to shoot on locations and also to construct sets, design sets and make shoot films in studios. Recent big budget films such as phone swap, the meeting all these were shot for most part on a studio which is a rarity for Nollywood. While there is no doubt that Nollywood exhibits the hybrid character that is obvious in uh, many forms of uh, African popular arts, it is its acute um, you know use of uh, locality that gives it an unprecedented acceptability as the local cinematic expression in Nigeria and also in Africa. With the emergence of video film, the discourse of African cinema will need to be revisited in a very radical way. The films especially that come from Nigeria, they largely deal with moral dilemmas and the choices made with uh, um, religion both Christianity and Islam playing a major role in the decision making processes of the protagonist. Um, the industry is also known for major documentaries such as Welcome to Nollywood and This is Nollywood and this, these films they give an overview of the industry, the unique distribution process of these films and the reliance on off the shelf equipment. So, this is just a very brief uh, overview of African cinema. So, thank you very much and we will meet for our next class and we will be talking about Iranian films.